John Joby doesn't call me anymore. He used to. He used to be close. We used to be tight. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, he let me play this song. Who do you like more? Peterson, 48%. Man, it's close. It's split down the middle. I like that. I like to see that. Who do I like better? I think I'm more like Destiny in terms of controlling myself. Peterson tends to get too emotional when he gets uh, amped up. Uh, and then he says things I don't think he really, really means. But then again, he's a little bit like me. Peterson's a little bit like me in the sense that he's okay being misunderstood because he knows who he is. Um, but who do I like better? Who, it, I guess the question would be like if I had to spend an afternoon with one of them, who would I spend an afternoon with? I think Peterson. I think I'd spend an afternoon with Peterson over Destiny. Peterson's older, he's more experienced in life, like on just, you know, not politics, just anything. He'd pro he's probably traveled the world more than Destiny, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, Destiny is um, is a little bit too weird for me. Like once you get to be my age, uh, weirdness is not a, as attractive. Like anybody who colors his hair blue. Although Peterson might color his hair brown. Let me give you the link to uh, call in. I'll give you my thoughts if nobody calls in. But you don't want to know what I think. Um, there we go. And uh, Nathan, if you're still up and still have gumption in your soul, if you're not too tired, you can call in. Because I know um, Nathan from Digital Gnosis, he just did a review. And he loves Peterson. He's a big fanboy. Maybe that will get him to call in. And um, he probably has many things to, uh, to say. But Peterson and uh, Destiny talk about many different topics. Many. In two hours. Okay, what's the final results? 55 Peterson, 45% Destiny. See... Uh, my my uh, clientele here at the U Pine Creek channel, and welcome if you're new here, it's it's changing, it's shifting. It used to be a bunch of uh, progressive liberal atheists, and then I scared them all off with my politics. It's getting more and more conservative, I think. Because back uh, two years ago, I think that these results would be very different. But it's too bad. It's too bad uh, people on the left, the progressives, are scared of me now. Not scared of me, they just don't like me. Oh, here we go. That was quick. You're quick. <laughs> hey, I you're talking about a topic I want to talk about. Oh, excellent. Okay. Did you watch that whole thing? I've only watched a little bit of it. I think um let me turn you up here. From what I've seen, Jordan Peterson really gets riled pretty quickly. You talk about you know, emotions and liberals being emotional. I mean, nothing wrong with that, I think. But man, Jordan Peterson, he just, he's got energy. Yeah, that's, uh, he needs to sit down with me and um, learn how to be more dead inside, right? I kind of agree with that. I think he regularly, if you look at his Twitters with Elliot Page, he really just gets very, very, I don't know, very angry at the world. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's a personality type, or do you think he was touched in the no-no place as a kid? Or <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> I'm trying to have a serious conversation here. Um, I think I think what it is is a lot of men um, enjoy control. Like I think that's something we want is control in our lives. And being a psychologist, he's good at um, you know understanding people in a way, controlling people. And he kind of feels that reach towards society now. Like, I think he feels he can manipulate for good, in his view, society. So he's using his emotion. He's, he knows emotion is powerful. Look at Trump. Emotion is powerful. It moves people. You know what? That's a good point. And maybe I need to be less dead inside and more emotional <clears throat> to, for the th topics I'm passionate about. Like, I need to cry. I need to yell. <laughs> I think... I think... I think for men, I guess Jordan Peterson has cried, right? Oh, yeah, many times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe not out on the outside, but during that talk with Destiny, I'm sure he was crying on the inside. 
<laughs> why <laughs> why do you think that works for him where a lot of times it's seen as weakness like why would that work for jordan peterson because he has he's gone through a lot he's he's gone through drug addiction i think his wife is currently going through um, a terminal illness um he's gone through a lot and he wears it on his sleeve why does why does that work well i think it still boils down to what he's saying and he appeals to many people young men but even women he appeals to be I, maybe he's he appeals to women when he uh, brings out his emotions. Um, like my sister loves him. My sister actually mm -hmm. attributes Jordan Peterson to, I wouldn't say saving her life, but to um, just making her life way, way better. Like she would tell you that. I think my mom might've mentioned one of his books, like the um, 10 rules for life. I think she might've mentioned that. So it's, you're right. It is more than just men. Yeah. So maybe that's, maybe he's doing a broad appeal. Like he realizes. Well, I don't think he's faking. Way. He can't. I yeah, mean, I agree. Yeah. It's not like he's okay. I'm going to talk to destiny and somewhere in the middle of this debate, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> no, it just happens. I, yeah. It's. I it's think that's deep. what, well, I think that's what gave him his meteoric rise to fame is that he, with the Canada C-16 or whatever that bill was, he was very, he wasn't calm with people. He was very confrontational. And maybe that's just his, it's kind of right place, right time. Like he's a confrontational person. He's a very much like, I know what I'm talking about person. And he kind of did that there. So I don't know. It's, he's interesting. I don't agree with him a lot, but he's interesting. Well, is there a certain topic that he discussed with Destiny that uh, you were passionate about and you, made you cry or... Well, I think they just released it yesterday and I'd only seen snippets of it. Um, maybe you can tell me something you agree with him on and I can see if I disagree there. If well, you want where, to go there and then where I he got really passionate, I think was on the vaccines and climate change, maybe, if memory mm -hmm. serves. I'm going through the timestamps here now. Yeah, I think those were the two biggies. And his big, his big thing is that um, he sounded he reminded me of T Jump. You know who T Jump is? Oh, yeah, I know. I know Tom Jump. Yeah. So Tom's main moral philosophy is no coercion. And I, I, I heard that from Peterson many times about uh, the vaccine should never be forced upon a society. Um, nothing should be forced upon a society. And Destiny said, well, of course, there's some things we force on society. And, and I know Peterson knows this, but he's, he's making like a very emphatic point. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And with climate actually, change, yeah, go ahead. Well, I actually have a stance on um, vaccines and businesses. When it comes to businesses, if they want you to wear masks or be vaccinated, I think especially in a free economy, um, the business, in my opinion, can make that opinion if you need to wear a mask. And frankly, a business, a business can say, in our business, you can't wear a mask. Um, that was kind of my stance. I'm pro-masks, pro-vaccination. You know, I'm liberal. So, But I'm also for... A business can decide how they you want to run You know what's interesting? Business. What's that? You said, I'm pro-masks, pro-vaccinations, I'm liberal. But prior <laughs> to 2020, it was liberals far left who were more against vaccinations. You might have been right with the whole measles thing. I think in New York, they've had a lot of problems. Like there's been a, there was measles outbreak in parts of New York. Um, a lot of, yeah, no, you're right. You might be right. Because that was more of a Hollywood thing. Like there was a lot of Hollywoods too. I remember that. So I, I think a lot of it boils down to fears and what fears yeah. uh, are the strongest for certain individuals. And for, I think for the left in the United States, at least, they were more scared to die from COVID than the right. I think there's actually polls and studies that show that. And so if you're more fearful of death from COVID, you're going to be like you. You're going to say, I, I'm all for masks. I'm all for vaccinations. If you're... Uh, if it's mid 2020, you're uh, you lean right. You're a right winger. You're a Republican. Number one, everything's in God's hands, right? That's what they'll say. <laughs> you know, it's a, I'm going to die. If I die, I die. That's you know, it's God's appointed time. So the Christian type uh, right wingers would say that. But I think just in general, <clears throat> people on the right tend to be more male, and they tend to be more risk loving than people on the left, and after a few months in 2020, it was pretty obvious that the vast majority of people dying were old people, um, yeah, at least over 50. Um, that's probably when it was the scariest time when 50-year-olds were dying.
but bef- in the early stages and in the late stages, it's like 75 to 85% people dying were 80 years old or older. It's, it's very hard to tell with the numbers. I looked into the numbers a lot. And one problem you run into is all the countries are recording them differently. All the states are recording them differently. If you looked at the, I monitored the numbers very closely. I did too. And yeah, it was hard to tell trends. And a lot of times, especially after a few months, uh, states started recording them intermittently, kind of like every other day or missing weekends. So you'd see these surges where sometimes they would have a dump of like three or four days worth of data. And it really was just, one of my big problems was, is you look at like World War II, where the country banded together and we kind of got unified on a goal. I hated that we were divided on this. I think we would have done better as a country if we came together and were cohesive on one objective. Do you know I don't why, know you do you know mm-hmm. why, um, like I, someone asked in the live stream ch- ch- uh, chat, Thomas asked if I'm pro-vax. Um, I would say in general, yes. But with the COVID vaccine, I would say that it was a mistake for, I'll be safe and say it's a mistake for tw- people 20 years old or younger to get the COVID vaccine. And I'll stand, and I got data to, that I think backs that up. And You're talking about like myo- myocarditis and stuff, right? Yeah, maybe well, not just that. I mean, if you, ju- if you just look at one thing, then you can say, well, of course, it's, you know, the, the benefit of the vaccine is better than the risk. I'm talking about everything combined. So <clears throat> interesting story. A good friend of mine and I had a back and forth. And he, in fact, he's been on this channel a couple of times. And um, I gave him a study. Are you talking to- about me? What? No, I'm not talking, talking about, about me. me? No, yeah, I'm I know. Me. I'm just kidding. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, I gave him a study to read and... He was poo-pooing it, and uh, and then I asked. He, he no, he made a comment about I only trust sources from oh where was it? From a certain journal, New England, the New England Journal of Medicine. And so I immediately went to the New England Journal of Medicine, and I did exactly you know what confirmation bias says you should do. I found the data that was this, basically the same data as the the journal he was poo-pooing that said the same thing actually it was even worse in terms of severe uh side effects of the vaccine and i i said it but i didn't source it and he goes yeah this is the, this is garbage well it's from the new england journal the the source you trust <laughs> and he he hated me for that but i had to teach him a lesson that uh, on the genetic fallacy um oh yeah <clears throat> so but anyhow like if you ask very simple questions like what do you mean by safe like when you say a vaccine safe, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean no one will die from it? No, that's not what it means. If you pin down a scientist who works for Pfizer and ask them that question, are you saying safe means absolutely no one will die? They'll say, of course not. That's not what safe means. And so then the question becomes, what type of risk are people willing to tolerate? And I think different people have different risk tolerance. But another question you can ask is, do the benefits of the vax- COVID vaccine outweigh the risks? And there's no blanket answer to that unless you get more specific, like, well, how old are you? Do you have any pre- mm-hmm. uh, pre-existing conditions? So if you're under 20 years old, the chances of you having a severe side effect that causes you to go to the hospital from the COVID vaccine is about one, I've seen different studies, it's between one and one, one in 300 and one in 800. So that's quite high, actually. Eight, if you have 800 people, and you give all under 20 years old, and you give them the, the COVID vax, one of those 800 is going to go to the hospital because of a bad side effect of that vaccine. Then you can ask the question, now what if the, none of them had the vaccine and they all got COVID? How many of those people would go to the hospital? If your answer There's is one other. If, if, your, if your answer is less than one in 800, then you're better off not getting the vaccine. Kind of true. I, I agree to a certain extent, but I was going to throw in one more variable. I didn't want to interrupt you. But the other variable would be what percent of people are going to get the disease from those who are not vaccinated. Like you'd have to take into account herd immunity to a certain extent. Does that also make sense? No, it doesn't matter. It means like if. I'm talking about people under 20 right now. 
Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is, let's say everyone under 20 was vaccinated, and because of that, people over 60 didn't get COVID. Right, right, right. And this is exactly what my friend, the point he made, um, that by vaccinating people under 20, when they cough and a big chunk of gob comes out of their mouth and hits a 65-year-old in the face, that they're, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, they're less likely to die. And I understand that. But then the question becomes of well, then we should mask or separate the people at risk from the young people. Not that we, A, shut down the whole economy and shut people, uh, you know, in their homes. Um, and we focus on what, the people most at risk. What about, what about if we, um, it's going to go a little 1984, I think that's the book, right? Uh, tell me if you hate this idea. Let, let's say we do no vaccinations, no vaccinations, which I'm pro-vaccination, but let's say instead we say it is a crime to find out you have a communicable disease and to go out and be in public with said communicable disease because you're putting the health and of others at risk. We could even have people be vaccinated, but let's say you're unvaccinated, you have a doctor say you have this disease and they say you need to be at home and you're allowed to go out for emergencies and stuff like that, but it, it would then be a like a misdemeanor crime. Is that dystopian for you? Well, I think that already exists. Like if you have AIDS and you have and you normally have unprotected sex with someone, can't you be criminally charged for that? I think there there was or is, but what if we put that to things like COVID that if you knowingly have COVID and you go to a concert? That's up for society to decide. Like I personally would say no to that because I don't think co let me shock everybody. I don't think COVID is that dangerous? If, co if COVID was that dangerous, would you be for it? Yeah, it, yes. If 10%, if five, instead of um, most people being old dying, if it was people under 20 dying, yeah. But that wasn't the case. You, you, seem, you care a lot about the children. You know, it's like they're our future. Yes. Uh, teach them well and let them lead the way. <laughs> you, you did miss, I'll let you go in a second here, but you did miss a Rocky IV quote. You should have said, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> that's another thing Anyways, that, that's another big difference between people is um like i have heard of 65 75 85 year olds say why are you shutting the economy down for me why are you doing all like if i die i die like it's i've lived my life i i mean i agree to a certain extent i know some older people maybe related to them and some of them are like i've lived a good life i've had a good time and i want to provide for you now you know we're talking about you know you make plans with your elderly family but don't it's, don't it's, don't don't yeah. leave though okay because no, okay i'm not gonna leave. no one's called <laughs> in yet and uh and i'm an old man and i don't know how much time i have left <laughs> <laughs> you're not we're we're not the same generation, but we're not that far away, Pine Creek. We're not yeah, that. You far sound away. like you're in your forties. Eh, Late thirties, maybe. You know, around around there, around there. You're you're in your fifties, right? Yeah, early fifties. That's fine. It's the first time. Real quick story. The first time I ever realized my dad was old, I was wrestling him in the front yard. I was I was a wrestler in high school. It's probably why I got a good part conservative mind. Did some contact sports. But um, I like took my dad's arm, turned it behind his back, and he was like, ow, ow, ow. And it's the first time I ever, ever realized my dad's not like this, you know, impervious figure. It was kind of interesting. It's like a wake up moment in your head as a kid to be like, oh, I'm stronger than my dad in some sense. I don't know if you ever had that moment growing up. Oh, no. For me, it was, you know, you're old when you're, you watch sports and you realize you're older than everybody on that, on that team. Okay. Like when you grew yeah, up watching sports, you're usually 16, 17, 18, and all these professional athletes are older than you, right? And then at some point, you know, they retire and new, they're replaced. At some point you realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm older than all these basketball players. I'm older than all these golfers. I'm, I'm older. I mean, it's, it's just like, it's freaky. Yeah. I mean, with Tom Brady now retired, I mean, who's the oldest person in the NFL? We're, I'm sure we, we probably are both older than them, but I don't know yeah. what, I'll jump back to Peterson and Destiny. I'm, I'm quite a fan of Destiny. Um, I think I told you one time that you and him should talk. I imagine he might, because you're on Discord, right? Yeah. Or you have been. He, he does have a Discord, and he's definitely talked to people of all different sizes. So, I mean, I think, I think your audience would like it if you... I know you're not doing this as a job or for growth, but you, you pull in 100, 200 people. 
Well, <coughs> the thing is, I like conversations like this where it's just very organic. Um, yeah. Like, I don't, I, I tease people when they call in, they don't know what to say. But um, for Destiny, since he's such a big YouTuber, you, you really got to be prepared and know what you want to ask. And the thing is, there's so many things Destiny and I agree on that it would mm -hmm. be difficult to have, I think, a good conversation. I'm sure we could find things after a long while that we disagree on. Like, he probably has in his head that all Trump, anybody who would vote for Trump is an idiot. Um, I think he would say something like that. And I can tell you what he'd say. What would he say? Uh, he'd use a word I don't wor use, a word with an R. He would straight up call them that. Re retarded. Yeah, I'm not going to say it, but you can. But yeah. uh, he would, that's, that's how he'd describe them. But the, but the thing is, I, a guy like me could very easily convince him otherwise that. Oh! Uh, yeah. With half my brain tied behind my back. Well, we should, you should clip this and tag Destiny. <laughs> and there you go. You got your clip. Because, from this. because he very well knows that people have certain it, political issues in their head that they value a lot and they're willing to compromise other things. Like, they call those wedge, like wedge issues. Yeah, yeah, abortion is a great example. So you can be a, a, a Democrat or you can be a person who is very pro-choice and there's this person that you agree with on almost everything but that, but because they're pro-life, no, not voting for them and vice versa. Oh, yeah. No, I've, uh, I've experienced it and I've seen it. And I know of people in my family who will vote for a candidate just for pro-life. Pro-life is the big one. I don't, I don't even think LGBT is that big. Uh, people could probably, it really is pro-life. It's all about the babies. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, was, well, climate change, if you want to talk about that really briefly, because I've, yeah, I do. I've looked into that a lot. And the facts are you can't dispute that the world is getting warmer. Like there's no way all the data shows that. And I don't know if you dispute that. Uh, I do not dispute it. If you're talking for the last, uh, let's say, few hundred years, you correct. Can, you it, can dispute it if you're talking the last million. Oh right. yeah, oh yeah, right. And it's we're looking at ice core data, and then cr I think it's the crust data. I'm trying to think what data it is, but you're right. We are in a warming cycle right now, probably started by the industrial revolution. And when you look at the greenhouse gases, which are methane, CO2, and water vapor. Um, we've definitely had a lot more CO2. Um, one of the big sources of CO2 would be volcanoes, but a lot of CO2 from humans, which China is going to be a big producer of. But so I'm, know, not, I'm not a little bit uh, Peterson made a great point about um, people who, who climate change is a big value to them. And that is if you are concerned about CO2 and you're against um, nuclear energy, I mean, what's wrong with you? What, then why don't you ask me the big question, Doug? Are you against nuclear energy? I'm not. I am for it. Yeah. See, I, I do not respect any climate change fanatic <laughs> who says, <laughs> no nuclear energy. I mean, here's my compromise. Like, I am not a climate change alarmist. I agree the earth is warming. I agree the sea levels are going up. But I am not worried about it at all. Why? It's part of my genetic makeup, maybe. But I just don't worry about those things. And um, well, I can explain why. It's because of time. We, we have agency. We can act and all that sort of thing. But I am willing to compromise and saying, hey, okay, let's get rid of CO2. Let's put in uh, a half a dozen nuclear reactors in the U.S. Let's put in three in Germany. Let's put uh, two in uh, the U.K. I mean, done. We can have very, very cheap energy. We can raise the standard of living of people, which helps the poor. We can eliminate all CO, well, a big chunk of CO2. What's the problem? I think the problem is, is I don't have much to say because I don't disagree with you. Yeah. It's because people are scared of Chernobyl. And Peterson brought up these points. They're scared of, they hear the word nuclear and they get scared. Just in the same way conservatives hear, um, uh, drag queens and get scared <laughs> well it's if you want to talk about that really briefly because i'm really scared of these moms for liberty people the ones who are going to all the school boards trying to control them basically and i've just seen it since i was in school that 
they're trying to indoctrinate our kids. They're trying to like put this back then it was, it was gay. Everything was like, oh my gosh, they're going to tell them about the gays. And I don't know who the gays are, but I've met gay people who are, you know, but I just got to tell you this. I just got to tell you this and everybody listening. I have some gay friends. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, we have liberal friends. I know that. So I'll trust you on this. <laughs> It just seems to me that there's always this othering and fear mongering about the out group. And, and I will admit there are bad actors, people who are trying to get hormones to kids when, who are not a doctor. Like if anyone's doing that, they should be fined, put in jail. Those are crimes to give people drugs that they are not prescribed. I'm not that kind of liberal. I'm the kind of liberal who says there needs to be age appropriate education for youth regarding things like consent, an appropriate touch and we need that in our schools and people look at it as like a what's age appropriate to you sure well like if you look at something like let's say the youngest of kids like kindergartners i'm not saying like what i imagine education would be at that point would be they would tell them there's certain spots if somebody touches you you and it's not like even if it's a parent at home you need to tell a counselor or something like they would tell them like that's not like the it's like the small talks that a kid's not going to know when they're like six or seven if something inappropriate is happening at home does that make sense mm -hmm. so i think public school can do that is have these talks of if there's inappropriate things going on or this is a no-no thing if this happens you need to talk to us about it and does are you for or you, against that you know what's interesting you, you, like what you just said about about uh going to school and telling your teachers if you're touched inappropriately from your dad at home or something there there's a common i think a difference between the left and right on this issue people on the right tend to want to keep their kids more at home and away from public schools where people on the left want to do just the opposite after school programs and stuff let's keep these kids away from their parents for as many hours of the day as we can, because those parents are crap. I, I don't, I don't, I disagree with that. Really? I, I think I have, yeah, I, I think, no, I, the right is more for homeschooling, yeah. but your intent, your intent on the left, I think is wrong. You're right about the right is more for homeschooling. I think the right is more, and you get me, I'm wrong on this. The right is more like they're indoctrinating my kid. I can't let them go through the public school system because they're going to indoctrinate them with evolution and uh, sexuality and all these things that I don't want my kid to learn about in public school. Yeah, I don't know. P the evolution thing, it's usually like I went to public school all my life except for two years. And the evolution thing came up only once or twice in high school. It's not a big deal. So even if, if I'm a parent, if I, if I was a parent who was against evolution and I'm not, but if I were, it still wouldn't be a big worry. Like if you're doing, like if I put myself in the shoes of the most radical right wing Christian, hey, I've, I've taught my, my child the ways of the Lord and they are secure. This teacher in this public school is not going to sway my child. I went to a Christian school for a little bit and let me tell you evolution is so you, you've watched like kent hoven obviously right yeah yeah it's to the very strong religious it's like teaching them to worship satan to believe in evolution you're, you're like talk, you're talking about a small well in the u.s it's not small but worldwide you're talking about a very yeah. small percentage of the protestant faith like the catholic church has said evolution is true i think or said there's nothing yeah. wrong with it yeah so I think you might be right. I might be talking about a subsection of the religious the right. South in the U.S. <laughs> Probably. Um, hey, I told you. Remember, you checked my IQ, so you were looking for a southerner. <laughs> but I, I think when it comes down to it, I don't know how, if you disagree on the age appropriate. At some point, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, somewhere in there, it needs to be talked about. You know, people engaging in sexual activities. You know, we as a society need to come together and say when is it appropriate to tell the youth about these topics to make sure they have some level of understanding because we've had adults i mean people have had their period and not know what's going on that's not an yeah, adult yeah. but people are very confused by the changes that happen and again i would 
see, as a conservative, I would blame parents first. These are stupid parents not teaching their kids. Um, and so the, the moral accountability, the personal responsibility goes on the parents. But yeah, if they're not doing it, then should the public schools do it? And I'm all for that. But what I'm not for is, let's say, in grade, grades K through 4, saying, okay, class, today we're going to talk about pronouns and non-binary, what that means. And I mean, that, no. Why would you ever do something like that? Would you be okay with if a student, so let's say it's not in the curriculum, but let's say a student were to uh, go to a counselor and a counselor is like, they go to them. They can only approach the counselors and the counselors could talk to them. Like the student says, hey, I've heard about this non-binary thing and they want to talk to a counselor at a school. Would you be okay with that? No, I don't trust okay, I would. <laughs> Dang so it. I'm, I'm being dead serious. Well, for K, I, I, again, I, I'm th talking about the context of K through four. I would, not, yeah, I, especially if it was a female left leaning progressive counselor, would not trust her at all. What if, okay, I'm going to add another step to it here. What if they said, I can talk to you about this, but your parents need to be present for the conversation? Oh, that's way better. Yeah, that changes everything. Okay. Okay, both, both I could parents, lean, both parents, both parents. Yeah, I could lean towards that. I could, I can. You see, we got to. I wish. This is the thing, and Destiny actually talked about this. That people often find this one difference they have, where maybe I want the counselor to be able to talk to kids. You want the counselor to be able to talk to kids with both parents present, but because of that, I think you're an evil person because you won't let counselors talk to kids. And I'll say like, oh, Doug just wants kids to suffer, and you'll say you don't want parents to. I know you're not going to say that, but these small differences where maybe we could find some way to make the system work where neither of us might be completely happy, but we'll have a better system. Yeah. Like uh, I went for a, a walk with my wife uh, yesterday and we were talking about the education system. And I, I uh, told her my thoughts about uh, the education system. And I said, we should actually like, I view this is going to sound crude and people are going to hate me for this, but I kind of view people like companies. Uh, like businesses and there are some businesses that you can throw money at and they will still always fail either because they have a poor product poor service poor business plan there's some uh, companies the more money you throw at them the more they can use it for innovation research and development and they thrive and this is going to sound so cruel but i actually view some humans like this that some you're you're better off putting your resources into um, the students who are more likely to benefit society and, and get a high return on your investment dollar now what do you do with the students who don't fit that criteria my wife asked and i said this is where private charities and organizations come into play not the state or or local or federal government because of this issue of accountability because i think when family friends neighborhoods charities are saying here we have a very specific case this kid doesn't even have food to eat this kid doesn't even have clothes or proper shoes um so how can you actually talk about education when the, their basic core needs are not being met right there's such a big deeper issue here and I'm a firm believer, yes, we should have government as a last resort safety net, but until um, individuals within the community come together and help these kids, they're, they're not going to be able to learn in school. There's so many broken homes and abuse and no food, no good sh shelter, clothing. Like my, my daughter works at a school and she said that the kid had uh, a big hole in her shoe and um she asked well why don't you get a new pair of shoes my my parents can't afford it so i said to my daughter i'm going to pay you find out her size secretly i'm going to pay for new shoes for this kid and this kid is a down syndrome kid too sweetest i have a I have a soft spot for Down syndrome kids because I had a first cousin who was Down syndrome. 
And I said, we don't need government for this. I can do this for, you, for this kid. And not only that, but I trust my daughter's story that, hey, this is a real person with a real need, a shoe, shoes. I can help with that. And I will. And I think we need more of that type of thing. You know, it's interesting. As you were saying this, I was imagining two glasses of water. So you got the one right there. But it's almost like you have this. <laughs> there you go. Well, so you can show I this. Well, you. you can do it. Demonstration as I say it. So you're going to have to pour a little bit. Don't get any on your computer. But it's like as you give more help to the society, pour one in one glass, then the world, the government gives less help. So now you're holding right here where you're giving help. Mm -hmm. So now you give less help. It's like this equilibrium is maintained. So the equilibrium of water between, I don't know how I know that. Doug, I just did some astral projection, I think. I don't know. God's <laughs> real. Um, but with this, it's like a zero net sum game or whatever that phrase is, because it's almost like by you helping out as a member of society, I'm not saying, and thank you for helping. That's always a good thing. But then the government, if enough people help, they stop helping. And maybe, maybe because the government started helping more, people started yes. helping less. Yes, so, you're right. But, yeah. But then once, so maybe you're right. Maybe if the government stops helping as much, we will have to form together as communities. But what is the good here? Wouldn't the good be if the government helps and people help? Wouldn't that be the best of worlds? Wouldn't, I'm an idealist. What, wouldn't what be the best of worlds? If we had a government that had a safety net and then people looked out for people like you're looking out, like you did a good right there, I think, in the world, wouldn't it be good if you helped? And yeah, the you're saying helped? both, right? Yeah, wouldn't it be good? Yeah, but I think the difference between people on the left and right is my way of fixing it, um, it should be first and then government last. But someone who leans left, it's reversed. Government first, people last. You know, I'm going to shock you and I'm going to say people first, government last. Yeah, but you are actually 51% conservative, remember? <laughs> I need to change the name to Doug's 51% conservative <laughs> friend. Yeah. Um, my big problem, we'll do one more here if you want, but or do you want to go on or give me a hypothetical? Um, no, what were you going to say? I, where I really, and I told you this last time, where I'm more conservative is usually on economic stuff. Like you can't get me on any social stuff. I'm really pretty far left even maybe on that. No, well, not extreme, but yeah, I'm left. But my problem is, I've met a lot of liberals who even talk about things like theft, where they'll say things like, I posed a hypothetical one time where I said, they were saying you could steal from stores. Like they were like, if you need something, someone should be able to steal from a store. Oof. I, yeah, I was like, that's insane. So I said to them, I gave them this hypothetical. I said, let's say I run a business out of my house where I repair TVs and I'm doing this to, you know, make money and uh, support my family. So you come over to my house and I'm basically a business because I repair TVs. Now, you don't have a TV, so you decide to take one of the TVs I've repaired because you're stealing from a business. And they were kind of a more wishy-washy when it's like their friend they're stealing from. But I really can't take this whole stance from liberals that it's okay well, to steal. Okay, let me pick your yeah. brain. Why do you some, think... Some liberals, some liberals. Why do you think some liberals that you talk to say what they say, that it's okay to steal? I think it's... Because people with little to no access to, let's say, the goods in society, whether it be electronics or um, quality food, not just food, people should have access to very, um, these higher quality items, like good electronics, like an iPhone. Like the, the whole thing came up because they were talking about stealing an iPhone, not just like a loaf of bread, which I'm not going to, no one should be put in jail for stealing a loaf of bread to eat. That's insane. So my stance is if you go in and steal a loaf of bread and you get caught and you're like someone who needs food to survive, they should take you to a food shelter and help you get the resources. Like if you steal a loaf of bread to survive. Yeah, but what time, be, you, you said they're talking yeah. about iPhones. Correct. That's a line for me. So you, yeah. you honestly think that's like, are you, do you think you're steel manning them? I, I have a hard time steel manning them. I guess my steel man would be Here's the best steel man I can give you. Yeah, I understand. I, yeah, it is hard as steel man theft, uh, other than, yeah. you know, for survival to, to eat. But in the United States of America, where there's food stamps, I mean, and there's churches, there's charities, it's pretty hard to go 
to die from hunger in the United States of America in 2024. Um, I think the steel. I think the steel man for them would be the food you get from these places. The food you get from food stamps is not enough. It's not quality. So you might still have to meet your basic needs by stealing. That's just that's the best steel man I could give them. So I don't agree you, with that. When you see, uh, which I have seen on video, when you see a group of let's say ten young men go into a jewelry store, smash the the glass and and take out diamonds, like what would the, your lib some of your liberal friends say to that? Like they need these diamonds. They're, they're going to resell they would, them, right? <laughs> yeah. If you look at um, people have covered this, and I really. I, I'm fearful that society has gone this way, that some people excuse the actions that I find criminal. Yes, and you know why? And I've done a video on this. This is, this is how I define wokeism. It is when you take your compassion to such an extreme, you, start, you can't even think objectively, and you start excusing bad behavior. These are poor black people. I mean, they're actually, they deserve repar reparations. So, you know, let's let them steal a little bit. Because that's the way we, our society can give back to them. Because if the government's not going to do reparations, let's get, let them steal from businesses instead. The, I think this is the real steel man for some of these progressive left people you talk to. But it's definitely people of all different races, backgrounds, colors, ethnicities, you name it. And there's really? Theft is, yeah, I knew a lot of people stealing growing up, and I had a lot of white no, friends. No, no, I mean, but, the, the, like, but would your liberal friends defend, uh, to the same extent, a... Asian from a rich neighborhood stealing. That would be something you'd have to ask them. Yeah, my guess is no. It's this feel sorry forism of if you're an oppressed minority, go ahead and steal. But if you're like, if I was to go in a store and steal, they would say what? I should be locked up, right? Probably like Jerry's parents, you know, Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really, I get fearful of society when people go to these extremes and I don't like the extreme of the left. I don't like the extreme of the right. And I don't know, one of these days I need to take you up. Well, no, let's, 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 let's be fair though. Let's be fair. Like I honestly believe that the people in the middle, the moderates don't do much for society. It's the extreme left and the extreme right that will actually either make progress like the extreme left, you know, progress, or the extreme right that will reel in that because it's a bad progress. It's like uh, almost a regress. And so the far left and the far right work as like a, a counterbalance. But when we as a society do make progress, I actually think a lot of pe times it's because of the extreme left. Like slavery is gone. Like yeah. women being able to vote. Great things, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I although... I would like slavery actually probably wasn't the extreme left. It was the extreme right who got rid of slavery. Well, literally, when you think about even like, let's just look at Reagan, uh, Reagan Republicans. They are not Trump Republicans. The parties, I hate it when people say the parties flipped. A lot of people say, oh, the parties flipped. What happened was, is there was a lot of Dixiecrats. If you look at it, it was mainly a North versus South vote where the people who voted for slavery were Southern Democrats, who then the Southern Democrats left the Democratic Party. And you just have this mor morphing of parties over time where I think Reagan would be in absolute disgust because if you look at Bush, he doesn't even support Trump. So the parties have changed even from when I was a child. So they've changed drastically from, like left versus right doesn't even make sense to talk about slavery. It was just the people at that yeah, time right. called themselves. Yeah. And yeah. so I don't, I, don't even, I don't even say it was Republicans or Democrats. It's just the people of that time. And you're right. It was the more liberal-minded people who called themselves Republican. So, yeah. But yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Well, good talking to you, Doug. Yeah. Always good talking to you, too. What's your, are you going to give me your first real name, your real first name? That's I go by Adam. Adam. Okay. Nice talking to you, Adam. See you. See you. <clears throat> See, this is how people who have differences in opinions can have good civil talks. Although I think he's more conservative than he lets on. He's definitely conservative fiscally like most people are. Um, 
iPhones were brought up and we also talked about the vaccines. One of the real problems with the COVID vaccine was that it wasn't self-evident to people that A, they needed it, B, that it worked well. For example, and I bring up this example because iPhones were mentioned, you don't need to convince people, like when the smartphone came out, when iPhones came out, I honestly don't remember a lot of advertising, maybe very early on, but people saw other people with these gadgets in their hand and said, I want that. And then they, you know, played around with it. Oh, this is useful. I need this. That never really happened with the COVID vaccine. Like if, imagine you're in a neighborhood where half the neighborhood took the vaccine, half the neighborhood didn't. And you're a person who didn't. And you see your neighbors who didn't take the vaccine start to get really sick and die. And your neighbors who didn't take, who did take the vaccine, be healthy and live. You don't need a scientific study at that point. You don't need to convince people. You don't need to go door to door. You don't need advertising. They see it. It's self-evident to themselves. That didn't happen with the COVID vaccine. And, well, at least not to the extent with iPhones and the analogy I'm making. Heidi wants on, but Heidi wants to talk about religion. Heidi, I know you want on, but um, I've encouraged you to stop watching my channel. <laughs> um, I don't know. Should I let Heidi in? Heidi, Heidi, Heidi. You shouldn't watch yes. this channel. I'm not trying to upset you. I know, but you shouldn't watch my channel. I just have one question for today. Okay. What is um, nuclear energy? What is nuclear energy? Nuclear energy is when you have... You know what an atom is, right? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Well, there's certain atoms that are kind of uh, malformed. They're they're kind of uh, ugly, and so they they it's almost like they these atoms have zits, and these zits pop off. And when they pop off, they give off energy, and then people use that energy to boil. Uh -huh. They use that energy to boil water and turn turbines. See, this is why I'm a teacher, everyone. I can actually compare okay. isotopes to <laughs> zit <laughs> faces. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Thank you for answering my question. Oh, Have well. a good day. Okay. Comparing isotopes to pimples. There you go. Yeah, she was loud. That's partly my fault. I can control the volume. Um, Adam was a little quiet, so I turned him up. So what were we talking about? Yeah, I, I think for a lot of people, uh, they were told that the COVID vaccine was a good idea for them. But since most of the people who died from COVID were really old people, uh, they really didn't see the benefit for them. They didn't see it. It wasn't tangible. This is why you know, a lot of people are not Christian, to relate this to religion. They haven't had these personal experiences. But I guarantee you, if it was like, oh, here's my neighborhood, and 10% um, of, of my neighborhood of people under 20 years old have been dying if they don't take the vaccine. And if they do take the vaccine, these kids are living. I mean, you don't need to convince people at that point. They're going to take the vaccine. Okay, room's open. Uh, all you have to do is press the P 
pinned link at the top of the live stream chat. If you're on mobile, you have to show your make your chat visible so you can see it, see the pinned link. What else did uh, Destiny and Peterson talk about that I found it interesting? Yeah, the differences between the left and right is just differences in fears. I think uh, Peterson was right when he was talking about left fearing uh, big corporations, the right fearing big government. And he made a very build a bridge type comment of the left and right need to say, hey, we got this in common. We both don't like big, powerful X. And we just differ, differ in what X is. I don't trust these big corporations and how they treat people and all this. Well, I don't trust the government and how they divvy up the taxes and all that. But they both have that in common. They don't, it's distrust of this, he called it uh, gigantism. Oh, here's a question for getting back to climate change that I have for people who are climate change fanatics or alarmists. Um, if it were true that I could solve the climate change problem, get rid of all greenhouse gases, but it meant that capitalism became stronger in the world, would you be for it? So I can get rid of all CO2. I'm talking to the left-wing progressives right now. I can solve the climate change issue. But it means that there's going to be more capitalism in the world, more free markets, Let me throw in, in more wealth disparity. Oh. Would you be for a solution to climate change if it meant more wealth disparity? That the rich would get richer and the poor would get poorer. Now you got a conundrum, right? Now you got to do some math in your head. Are more people going to die from that uh, wealth disparity or are more people going to die from climate change? A lot of people are answering, answering in the affirmative in the live stream chat. But I don't think that's easy for a lot, some progressive people on the left to answer. Because they hate capitalism so much. Depends on how you define wealth disparity. Well, um, look at the wealth distribution in the United States right now. So get that in your head and imagine that increases, let's say, 10%. As a result of this solution to climate change, would you go for it? I think that's a tough question for many progressives. Because now I'm pitting two things in their head. They hate climate change. The, they're very alarmed, but they hate capitalism more. <laughs> they hate um, this free market system that they think leads to this wealth uh, disparity. So what do you do? And if you listen to a lot of climate change alarmists, part of their solution is wealth transfer from rich nations to poor nations. Feel free to call in. Tell me what your opinion of the Peterson Destiny talk, what you agreed with, what you disagreed with. Who do you like more? If you hate Peterson, tell me why. If you hate Destiny, tell me why. If you love Peterson, tell me why. If you love Destiny, tell me why. Or like them, dislike them.
Tell me what you think about my idea about education. That we are doing the exact opposite of what we should be doing. Dr. Jordan B. Peterson. Oh, I have a feeling I know who this is. Hello. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> Mr. Peterson, good uh, that you could call in. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. And you? I don't believe you. <laughs> You can always tell the pain inside the soul of a person, can't you, Peterson? Sometimes I can. It depends on what a soul is. And I think we disagree. We shouldn't go down that rabbit hole. I missed the first part of the stream. Are you siding with me or Destiny, the blue-haired guy? I like both of you. That's not a clear answer. Well, on, some, on some things I side with you and some things I side with Destiny. Like, okay, so... Like, I think you're far too emotional of a guy. Well, I don't think that's such a bad thing today, you know, but maybe it is. You think it's a... Do you think emotion is some some indication of a, a lacking of masculinity? Yeah, I don't think you're a real man. Well, that's quite the jab. I have, you know... That's very direct talking. I can appreciate that. Now, what is it that's missing that if was present, you'd say I'd, I'd go up in the rungs of, of manlyhood? Well, if you'd be more like me. Well, what are some of the char characteristics there? You know, I don't see much. I mean, I have more hair than you. Well, that's exactly. I mean, a real man has less hair because that means they have more testosterone. You, you are lacking testosterone. You're what we call Listen. we're what, what you we we call a girly man back in the on the farm. Have you ever bitten into a, a raw steak? <laughs> no, because I'm smart. Okay, so you've never tried the carnivore diet, have you? No, I have. I've well, mostly. I have tried. Have you, it. Have you ever have you have you ever drinking the pure blood of a lamb? <laughs> No, that's a sin, according to the Old Testament. Well. You should uh, know that, Peterson. No, you've you've that's read not Exodus. Well, I'm still psychologizing the Bible. It's an ongoing project. Oh. I've not come to the final conclusions on the matter. So you're not a Christian yet? Well, I act as though I, I live as though Christianity is true. Well, that does, that's not going to help you when it's time to go to hell. Well, that depends on what judgment is. <laughs> I would say you're constantly being judged today by so many people. You're judging yourself. So I don't understand what the big problem is. You know, just because it's a higher power judging you, I don't understand. It's like we're, we're obviously assimilated to a judgmental society. Well, nobody's, right? nobody's scared about judgment. People, the, what people are scared about is the punishment that comes from judgment. Right. Well, that is to say, we've articulated to the to an exhaustive, uh, uh, you know, uh, end point to what this torture is. You know, we're not even certain. Um, our concept of torture here is the same there. You know, it's like a big assumption, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, did you hear me the other day, Peterson? I know you're an avid follower of the Pine Creek Channel. Did you hear me the other day? My solution for crime that we should chop off the pinky off the left hand. Instead of putting yes, in I think the pinky is a little bit soft, honestly. I think you, if you're going to go that far, you might as well just take a chunk or a, or two or, or the one hand. I mean, why not make a statement? The pinky? Well, but, like, the, but then you give opportunity. Like if they steal, you take the pinky off. If they steal again, you just keep going. Well, that, that might, yeah, if it's a progressive thing, then maybe you have a point. But I don't think the single pinky, you know, fair enough. You know, you just keep going. Now, what if someone's capable of stealing um, quite well with just two nubs? <laughs> well, yeah, then maybe the hands need to come off. I don't know. Now, I think you're you're following. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. They're going to be pushing back a little bit on the climate issues. That your your take on the climate um, alarmism? Yeah, yes? I, I, I take your side on the climate stuff. Well, you, we're both old enough to to know the previous promises and threats, right? And we know that yep. they they didn't come true, right? Yeah, you are exactly now, right. 
So do you think that it's a it's a do you think that there's a phenomenon where the young people become idealists and then they get taken advantage of by these sort of narratives? You know, like Bernie Sanders is a perfect example. He's got a never ending demographic of young idealists. But, you know, Peterson, it goes deeper than that. The reason why the young people are clinging on to things like uh, climate change is because they're leaving religion and they need to fill that gaping hole with some some meaning, hope and purpose uh, that they're doing something great for the world. I'm going to have to agree. I do think there's a, such a thing as a God hole, which is my next book. I was going to make my my recent book, God hole. But my my handler said, no. Make it about those who wrestle with God, which is a synonym for another group of people or another place, at least. Um, so, yeah, I was redirected, but I would love to get back to the God hole phenomenon. I think you're I think you're dead on here. I think that people people latch on. And once it's empty, they need to grab on. But we have different positions. I don't think that's ever fulfilled. Uh, you're saying you. You don't think a person like me, an atheist, can ever fulfill that hole? No, I think that you sort of invert it and you say, well, I'm so dead inside, but nobody actually believes you. <laughs> well, when I say I'm dead inside, I mean I'm more dead inside than you. Well, you haven't seen me at 2 a.m. in my kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't. If you said, if you said, hey, hey, Marco, what is it there, Jordan, you're standing in? What is that pool of, of liquid? I would tell you, I don't know. <laughs> You've never killed That's a man, That's the though, honest have you? answer. What's that? Dr. Peterson, have you ever killed a man? <sighs> Depends on what you mean by death. Um, you know, there was, there is an interesting sort of thing that happened to a, a you know, a past roommate, and I don't know whether I'm just putting the guilt on myself or maybe I'm misremembering things that went on in the house, but um, I, the, cur the honest answer is I don't know. Well, I understand that answer because um, in early college, I went to Tampa, Florida, and some really weird stuff happened, and I do not talk about Tampa. Yes, I think... Well, there are times and places in our lives where it's probably best to st not remember, but it sort of goes against everything I stand for, you know, so it's, it becomes a problem for me. But someone who's dead inside like you, it, it doesn't really affect you, does it? No, no. Like I, I see, I say people should be more dead inside because I think you can think more clearly when you can strip the emotions part from uh, the cognitive part. Right, but then aren't you in a problem once you're so uh, focused on the clarity of thinking, you'd have to insert some sort of value as to why you're thinking properly. Uh, in other words, toward what? And the moment you say toward what, you're suddenly not no longer emotionally dead. No, no, I, I think I see what you're getting at, but I, I do believe that when it comes to um, instigating a, a proposition, then you need that passion. But to think about, is this the right proposition to begin with, then you need to be more dead inside. So when you're on here doing your thing and talking about the truth and getting to the bottom of it, do, is it that you just don't care? Uh, mostly, you're right. I, I actually think by not caring, you can get to the truth easier than caring. Right, but then you're in a sort of a paradox that you suddenly are saying, "We should we care about the truth once we get there with such clarity?" Ah, yes, is that's the paradox of it. Should we care about the truth, and why ought someone care about the truth? And that's where I I get to pragmatism. So if I have a goal, and let's say the goal is I don't like theft and I want to stop th thievery, then I become dead inside and ask, "What's the best?" Uh, way to get rid of uh, that crime and I say chop off the pinky finger that we can try it and see if it works and um, But well that well, I have a question about that Is it mm -hmm. possible to have a goal such that the denial of the truth help uh, truth helps you realize that goal? Suddenly then the art oh, is not oh, oh. pragmatic, right? Peterson, I understand why you have a PhD in psychology because that's a great question. Yeah, when it comes to uh, pragmatism sometimes pragmatics and truth 
come in conflict because we can tell kids that, hey, eat this uh, delicious chocolatey dessert. And when really we're sneaking in um, medicine in it to we're lying to them that this is not just a, a dessert. This is your medicine. Right. I mean, that's us deceiving. That's like the question of whether or not being deceptive could be good or not. What I'm pointing to is whether or not it's in someone's favor to deny truth itself. Like without it happening to you in that in that example, you're saying that the, the father is lying to the child for his own good. I'm saying, oh, yeah, yeah. coming to falsities yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't even know if that's possible. Like, if the person themselves really, really believes it's false, would they believe it? Well, if it's pragmatic, you could probably practice holding a position, and maybe there's some threshold at which you no longer know the difference between believing something true or, or owning up to that it's false. Yeah, I guess you're talking about self-deception, right? Well, for instance, things that you couldn't possibly measure in any objective way, like, do you love your wife and does your wife love you? Mm -hmm. These are things that, you know, to some extent might be unfalsifiable, it's certainly not empirical. Oh, but no, if that's I, I the case... I think it's very empirical. Well, the standard is, but someone could change the standard. Yeah, but I would like say if each you said, person has their own standard. Right. If you said, well, I could measure how many pancakes lovely makes me, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, she loves me. Yeah. Right. But I'm saying that the thing we're calling love itself, that that's a lie. Well, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> Anyhow, I got to let you go. But what do you think of this guy? Have you ever uh, stumbled upon a, a YouTube channel called um, The Crucible? That's right. You, you you know of it? Yes. What what's Andrew's deal? Do you know his deal? Like uh, he 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 seems like he can't talk to me about religious stuff because his church told him not to or didn't endorse him or something. Well, I mean, if you're going to speak on behalf of a body, you know, if it's a company or anything else, it would make sense why you uh, you could. Uh, effectively speak on their behalf and maybe maybe uh deal with the consequences of misrepresenting correct yeah so yeah. like if you worked for disney right let's say you know you you're held to a certain standard and if you start talking on behalf of disney on their whole holistic position and you get it wrong so right? are, you, are you saying if andrew got it wrong he'd be fired from the orthodox church excommunicated no, no, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not certain how much it takes to get excommunicated, but certainly if you're a figure who is gaining uh, notoriety, you know, and you speak on behalf of something that maybe at the, the holistic level, you, 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 you don't know the ins and outs fully. Well, Andrew's but not maybe that general. big. I mean, well, he's, he's not well, that notorious. If you have any impact, well, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, the Orthodox Church, at least in the West, um, is a little bit um, um, concerned with on what they call online orthodoxy. Are you ever going to become orthodox? Well, in a symbolic way, <laughs> perhaps, you know, I've been hanging out with my buddy Jonathan Pijou, and he's really good with all the symbols and the words and stuff, and so I really jive well with him. But, you know, my biggest problem is, is graduating out of the heuristic i'm like you the pragmatic I'm, when i look at religion i can't help but see it as some sort of technology and you know that's not necessary you know from your view that's a great thing but from my view you know I'm, I'm i'm sort of like how do i get out of the the very you know sterile approach to such a such a deep topic you know well religion is way more than a technology it's a way to give people hope meaning and purpose it's like a comfort blanket right Right, but the thing is, I disagree with that. It's not always that comforting, you know? It's not. What's not comforting? It's horrifying. It? What's horrifying about religion? It's horrifying to think that, you know, there's something beyond your understanding that somehow intervenes or, or bridges between immaterial and material. 
There's something that, that's, that's beyond you. The uncertainty of it. Ah, the uncertainty. Yeah, see, I'm okay with uncertainty. Maybe that's why I'm an atheist. Like, I'm well, self-employed. Self well, you're okay with some uncertainty. Well, let's say more than the average person. Like, I've been self-employed my most of my life. <clears throat> my cash flow has always been lumpy. Great months, bad months. But some people, they just need a steady paycheck to be happy. Is there anything that sends you over the edge as far as anxiety or anything like that ever? Other than horse betting, betting on horses. Uh, no, and this is my, my weakness because I cannot relate to the common man because I can only remember maybe two or three times in my entire life that I've experienced anxiety. Well, here's the thing, and I, and I know you have to go, but you said you're dead inside, and it's better to reason being dead inside. And maybe there's some truth to that. It's just that maybe one would say you're immune to alarmism in general, whether it's theism or climate alarmism or anything else, perhaps because you're dead inside. Yeah, no, you're right. But here's the thing. What if you said you should be more dead inside because you can see these things more clearly, right? Well, again, this paradox, it's, it's, no, it's going to haunt me. It's that, it's, it's that you're basically saying everybody should, in a, in a way, if you like to be more reasonable, be more dead inside. But the thing is, suddenly you cannot be dead inside to people lying to you about narratives. Well, people, I think, have been mistaken with me, and some people have lied to me before, and it doesn't seem to bother me. I'm saying people at the government level coming in with their jibby jabs and coming in with ah. their climate change policy, they're trying to manipulate people who are not immune to yeah. alarmism. Okay, yeah. But see, my philosophy, though, is that I can only control me and I can't control other people. So if society believes one thing and I believe something opposite, I accept it. I mean, what can I do? And well, other than well, present my arguments against it and be that lone voice saying, no, don't do this. Yes, the question, we, can, we cannot force people to believe or change minds. Yes. However, you would be a liar to say you don't, you're not aware of the possibility of influence and if the government is using influence, let's say in the media or the various apparatuses they use for propaganda, and you're countering that with argumentation and the way you are on your channel, etc., then then you do have influence. Yeah, yeah, like like that whole Russian thing, uh, you know, taking over social media. Uh, that never bothered me because I'm thinking, well, are people so stupid just to believe everything they see on social media? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll just leave you with this. Dead inside, good reasoning, according to you. But right around the corner is you ought to have good reasoning so you can see through the lies. Yes, yeah. I'm just saying being dead inside be, helps a little bit. Until you say, look, they're lying, don't believe them, then you're no longer dead inside. Well, if I say it very calmly, maybe I'm okay. Well, should people believe true things? Yes, I'd say mostly, not 100%, though. Okay, I think so then you're, you're not 100% dead inside, and perhaps I would argue that the whatever the lingering 3%, and I'm being liberal, um, is left. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that part probably overtakes you, you know? Suddenly that's more important in a certain moment, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of things I get emotional about. Like I do uh, kids being taken away from their parents because the parents won't use their preferred pronoun. That gets me emotional. Like injustice. Yeah. Injustice. Injustice, especially with any injustice with kids. P pedophilia. Like uh, they, it's a good thing I'm not in charge of what to do with them. Because it'd be a lot more than the pinky, huh? It'd be the winky. <laughs> All right, I've got to go drink some blood now. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, see ya.
That was Jordan Peterson, everyone. Big fan of the Pine Creek Show. Calling in from Canada, I believe. From Banff, I think, is where he usually vacations in spring. Banff, Banff, Alberta. Big Edmonton Oilers fan, that Jordan Peterson is. And loves bloody meat. If somebody wants to call in and, and um, disagree with my philosophy of being more dead inside, feel free. But I, I, you need to really understand my philosophy, and that is when it comes to debating, arguing, contemplation, even philosophical type arguments, it is better to be more dead inside, get, keep emotions out of it. But when it comes to implementing things, people who are passionate, like this is not me. I'm not a marketer. I am bad at it. Um, I think... Yeah, you want to hire people with passion, who can cry, who can laugh, who can get angry, because they will be able to resonate with people better than me. Ethan, welcome. Hello, hello. Yeah. Have we talked before? We have not, unfortunately. This is my, my first time with you. And oh, it is a well, welcome, welcome. I'm always um, happy to have fresh meat. That is one way of putting it. Well, I was really <laughs> surprised to see the Jordan B. Peterson appearing on your show today because I was hearing earlier with Adam that you didn't particularly enjoy um, mingling, so to speak, with people with very large audiences. So I was glad to see you branching out into a big audience. Well, no, well, no I, I, I'm not opposed to talking with people with large audiences. It uh, doesn't intimidate me if that's what you're getting at. I'm a real man. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, anyways, I wanted to talk... Just about a few things, because it's a little late where I am right now, but it's all right. Oh, you're calling from um, uh, calling from England. Oh, that's what my VPN says. I'm in Spain right now. Oh, no, I just guessed. Okay. Uh, so oh, what, okay. what did you want to talk about? Well, a few things from the, uh, from the Jordan B. Peterson thing, of course. Uh, I guess, do you think the development of technology has ever outstripped the development of society? Uh, if it has, it's right now. Would you say so? Uh, but I don't. I don't think we're there yet. I um, like this whole AI thing. I think yeah, mm -hmm. it's no biggie. No biggie. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I... Like, like if you just look at how stupid AI is, like. Uh, I think Google really screwed up with its uh, was it Gemini or something, and then people ask it, yep. show me pictures of, of the founding fathers, and and they make them all like woke uh, people of color. I mean, nobody's <laughs> going to trust that anymore. I mean, they got some serious damage control to do. That's true. I agree with you that that was a silly look for them, but yep. at the same time, I think the combination of knowledge and the amount of just at least surface level things you can learn from something like ChatGPT or Gemini is pretty powerful for the average person. To me, ChatGPI is just a glorified Google search. I can see that. I think yeah. it tends to be a little bit more Maybe you can help me with this. Ways. Explain to me hmm. what, like I, I understand that ChatGPI and other AI programs can do amazing stuff like tell it to draw a mountain, Escape or whatever, or people doing things or summarize certain things. But to me, it's just algorithms. It's not intelligence. I agree with you. Definitely not intelligence. It's just the amount of data that can pass through it to find these connections between certain ideas and be able to put forth in um, words through, through patterns. Yep. It's pretty amazing to me, definitely. And I'm not fearful that a uh, AI program is going to know me so well to manipulate my mind so it controls me so I'll never unplug it. I mean, all these fears are just from people who like to be fearful. Well, we're seeing some stuff from Neuralink now that people are playing chess. Isn't that quite amazing? Oh, they, they're playing chess through their minds? Or what do you mean? Yeah, they can, I guess, control the um, mouse virtually through the Neuralink. Ah, that's good for people who get like sore wrists from always holding their mouse or holding. Absolutely. 
some people have been wondering if there's going to be like mouse slips in tournament, but it's like a mind slip. It's like, how do you, how do you account for that with your Neuralink? Yeah, that's a good I question. But anyways, other than that, are you, what do you think about, are you scared of AI? I'm sorry. Are you no, scared? I think it's a hard one. I don't think, um, it'll be sentient anytime soon, at least. Cause I don't, we don't even understand what sentience really is or where it comes from. Um, and Chef GPT, as you said, is just a big jumble of pattern recognition. It's just higher level than we've ever seen before. Um, but I wonder how quickly it'll continue to advance, especially as we've reached kind of the end of Moore's law where computation power doubles every few years. So obviously we had a big boom in the 2010s, like 2012, with um, GPU development. And that kind of brought about a lot of computational power. But now, I mean, yeah, I'm just wondering. It's just, it's so difficult to predict something so new. Even though it's been in development, I guess, theoretically, since like the 30s and 40s. Okay, AI is boring to me. So uh, what else did you want to talk about? I understand. I understand. It's pretty boring myself. Uh, what do you think about the upcoming U.S. presidential election? I still think Biden is going to drop out within the next uh, three months, especially if his polls don't improve. Uh, I think the Democratic Party will force him out some way, somehow. Um, I don't want to vote for Trump, but uh, the pragmatic side, side to me says I kind of have to because I don't want Biden and I don't want anybody like Biden or his administration. I might vote for um, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., but I doubt it. I can't stand his voice. I just, I worry a little bit about the age of these people. I feel like we really got to get some young blood in there. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wish I was born in this country because then I would run and probably, you know, Huge win. I would vote. I would vote. Okay. Who are you voting I, for? I mean, I do tend to lean towards um, Robert F. Kennedy. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't like how extreme Trump is, and I don't. I don't like the identification that can be perceived from voting for him. Um, what do you mean by that? There is an idea about people who vote for Trump that I perceive oh, as negative. Ethan, don't tell me you're one of those people who care what people think about you. Not really, but I just tend to steer clear of that. But I also don't agree with that much of what he says. I think he's a divisive figure. Okay. But you would you vote if it was Biden Trump? Who would you vote for? I think I would vote Trump. Yeah, me too. Now, can you, for the people who are shocked that we say this can you very succinctly say why like maybe in one minute or less probably not i tend to need too much time to think unfortunately okay well, i'm then sorry I'll, then I'll maybe try. i can get chappy g chat gpt let me try no i'm just kidding please try um hang on let me get the timer this i like challenging myself one minute or less why i'm going to vote for trump over biden uh, timer, clock, timer, uh, stopwatch, start. Okay, I'm going to vote for Trump over Biden because I am willing to compromise. I, I think Trump is a narcissist. He um, has done probably some uh, bad things in the past. Uh, he's not a great role model for young people today or for anybody in general. However, um, I think that he is more akin to things I value, like I am not a climate change alarmist. I'm against all the woke business, gender ideology type stuff. Um, I'm still for smaller government, and he tends to be a smaller government guy, the Republican Party in general, even though they're terrible at that as well. Uh, and for immigration, I think um, 
the perception of him being a racist bigot is actually good to, uh, for when it comes to immigration because you want to control the crowds that are coming across, and he'd be more likely to put uh, the military on the border. That was 54 seconds. Congratulations. Yeah. Well put. <laughs> and if I had an extra minute, I would say stuff like, uh, like people say, would you vote for someone who raped a woman? I don't believe he raped a woman, any women. Um, I think uh, that one case of uh, E. Jean Carroll, I think she's nuts. I think she's crazy. I think she's a flat out liar. I think she's just bitter that, uh, about the abortion thing. She basically came out and said that on MSNBC. Um, the other thing about the fraud with the business dealings, uh, overvaluing things. I work in this industry. That happens all the time. It's a negotiation between the banks and different valuers. Uh, there was no parties injured. That was a bunch of BS, that lawsuit. So the lawsuit with Eugene Carroll is a bunch of BS. The fraud thing is a bunch of BS. The real interesting thing now that still is yet to be determined is the, all the January 6th stuff. Uh, and th with that, I would say he was never charged with insurrection because the prosecutors were smart and realized that probably wouldn't win that. And so they're going with other things. Uh, has he done, like when he t made that phone call to George, the Georgia governor, was it? And said, can you, you know, please find me some votes. Very unethical. I admit that. Is it illegal to ask someone to do something like that? Technically, no. And so, um, but this is the co compromising part. I am willing to compromise some of those unethical things Trump has done for these other issues I value more. And don't tell me that Biden hasn't done some things that, that at least appear unethical. And don't tell me that there hasn't been people accusing, who have accused uh, Biden of being raped by Biden, because there are uh, at least one person. And um, so, yeah, that was probably more than an extra minute. And I guess one last thing, this one more so from uh, JPP, Destiny. Um, what do you think about Nazi Germany's political leanings? Nazi Germany's political leanings. You got to be more specific. This was just a, this was just a short part of the um, yeah, interview. I remember they were kind of. I, I, as soon between, as they mentioned Hitler, I think I fast forwarded. Um, <laughs> they were they debating say? between like the National Socialist um, identity with the party versus what they actually did and like the authoritarian side of things. I tend to think that Nazi Germany was very fascist. Yeah, I would tend to agree with that. Uh, now, the question is, did that party do anything good? Uh, well, at least in the early years, I would say, yeah, they created a ton of jobs. <laughs> um, uh, what else can I say about that? What else did they say? That, that The difference between... Like, I don't... It's not a default position to me that authoritarianism is bad. It's not a default to me. Like people always say, um, the patriarchy is bad, and I just ask, why? Can you give me? A, can you articulate a reason why patriarchy is bad or authoritarianism is bad? It can be bad, but could it also not be good? Like it's definitely the case that the patriarchy is good, at least sometimes in history. It's the patriarchy that gave women the right to vote. It's the patriarchy that freed the slaves. They were all men. It's the, patri the patriarchy that I'll actually, yeah, it's the patriarchy that actually allows uh, humans to have rights because they're the ones who are enforcing it, the men. I think the pushback against authoritarianism in general is that it can so easily go wrong. Of course, um, obviously, I think, I mean, in, in a perfect society, you know, in the utopia, like, it would be communist or something like everyone would work for the betterment of society and you wouldn't care about money and you would like do things. Yeah, but, but you can reality, say that about any system like uh, socialism, communism can mm -hmm. go wrong. You know, there's moral hazards. There's absolutely people uh, cheating the system. So, yeah, it's any system can go wrong. So I, just to say I hate like I'm a parent. I am the authoritarian in my home. When it comes to my kids, that's case closed. Now, do you think my kids think they're li they live in a horrible home? No, my kids are very advantaged. They're pro in a way. I kind of like the um, 
the woke movement because it's going to give my kids more opportunities to show how work is done. <laughs> how you can actually <laughs> go to a job on time and work hard and move up. And like my kids compared to other kids their age, my kids have a huge advantage because they don't have this feel sorry for us. I'm like, uh, oh, you got to do this for me. And if you don't, you're bigger. No. And my kids are actually darker skin too. Oh, they're going to have, it's a huge advantage. They're, they're, they're like so many miles ahead of the starting line than most kids their age. I'm glad you haven't let the power go to your head. <laughs> well, if parents would be more like me, they too can raise children that, with that advantage. Oh, that, the, what I just said ticked a lot of people <laughs> yeah. off. Pull yourself <laughs> up by the bootstraps. How dare you say such things? <laughs> That's how. That's um, exactly how progressive people on the left sound. By the way, I would believe it. That's how. Well, unfortunately, that's a little bit about how uh, your previous guest, Dr. Jordan Peterson, sounded. Yeah, but you like the Adam. The, did you hear that uh, liberal guy who called in before Peterson? I did. Yeah. See, he's a rational liberal. Uh, I I actually think he he's a closet conservative, but um, but yeah, there are. I have nothing against liberals. It's the progressive woke type liberals that I don't like that much. But anyhow, Ethan, I'm, gl I'm glad you're new here. I'm glad you called in. And, uh, but I have a caller named Jack who wants on. Oh, absolutely. I understand. Thanks for your time. Have a good night. Good night. Jack. Can you hear me? So Pine Creek, what I'm hearing is you hate women, gays, non-whites, and immigrants. Am I close? Oh, man, you're reading me like a book. Even though I'm an immigrant, married a black woman, and have two Cocoa Puff children. Other than that, you're right. Like, I, I cannot be racist. Like, listen to me. I know there's some progressives who kind of watch my show, hate watch it. Listen to me clearly. I cannot be a racist because I have a black wife. Oh, God, I'm so sorry for doing that again. Oh, my God. Twice. Twice. What? Oh, well, you're here now. Yeah. Sorry about that, man. Uh, can you, hear, you can hear me now, right? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I didn't catch the end of the last guy's uh, thing, but I was informed by my friend and kind of heard in the stream, we actually agree on a lot more uh, than I realized after um, the first time talking to you. Uh, I, I guess I, you know, I, I just was a little curious to hear, you know, some of your other political beliefs. Um, you know, I, I think we're kind of on the same place with immigration and some other stuff. Um, I, well, I was just what do you want to know? Ask me anything you want. I was just kind of curious what your um, foreign policy position was, like on uh, Ukraine. I mean, God, I don't want to get the stream taken down, but if you want to hit the bugbear, the whole... Israel I don't care about that at all. Uh, I've only had one stream taken down, and it was because I teased uh, black people about wanting money for reparations. Um, <laughs> um, but you can say retard, you can say rape, you can say, like, it won't, this stream won't go down. But... Um, uh, let's see. What are my thoughts? Uh, would stop sending Ukraine money. Stop sending Israel money. Just stop it. We got enough problems of our own in this own country. There. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty isolationist myself on that front. So yeah, I, I definitely get that. I mean, one of the one of the reasons disband I'm... NATO. What? <laughs> disband NATO. Really? Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's let the uh, Europeans have increased mental anxiety. <laughs> that that the big brother America is not the, always there to help them. Yeah, I mean, let's see how they sleep at night. That way. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think I I mean, there's some sense that I mean, the thing is, you know, the EU like their countries in the EU with nukes, so it's not exactly as uh, I, I don't think it's as doomsday ish as something. Yeah, they say. can take care of themselves. Yeah, but um, yeah, okay, that, there's that, and um, I, well, I guess it kind of goes without saying. I pr I probably know your position on this, but I assume you're. Uh, you also oppose affirmative action, that sort of thing. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, I, mean, I judge people by the, the content of their character, the quality of their work, not the color of their skin. What we might disagree on is abortion. Yeah. I mean, I am, uh, I, I'm generally pro-life. Um, 
you know, I, I, I've kind of gotten more nuanced with it over the years, but you know, if you remember from the last time we talked, I am Catholic and I, yeah, you know, uh, but I also, am you don't stateless. like embryos going down the sink. Not particularly. Not yeah, particularly. See, I, don't, I, don't, I, I'd say it's like, to me, I was raised Mennonite and it's, it's a sin. It was a sin to throw your peas. Like if you didn't finish your peas at me at supper time, it was yeah. a sin to throw it in the garbage. I view throwing embryos the same way, uh, as throwing peas in the garbage really so peas have value they're good mm -hmm. for you embryos have value and they can be good for for society but is it really that bad throwing some peas down the garbage is it really that bad throwing some embryos down the sink so is there any line for you with that stuff like uh as far as you know third trimester development of the yeah, yeah the line is somewhere between 15 and 25 weeks so okay. i view abortion like speeding the faster you go over the speed limit the worse it is the further you go into pregnancy the worse it is yeah, I mean, I think that's a rational position. I mean, I, you know, I, I disagree with it for my own moral reasons. But I mean, the way I view it, I, I'm happy with the state by state thing after Roe. And while I would like a national abortion ban, ultimately, I would not want it until such time as like, we could have such consensus in this country, that there'd be a constitutional amendment. Like, see, that, I disagree with that. See, I think the Republican Party would actually start winning states like California if they softened yeah. up on abortion. Yeah, and I think there's logic in that, man. I mean, look, it is it is something I care about, but it's it's kind of a, a century-long project for me. <laughs> um, like, I, I, I'm willing to, like, wait on that, and I'm not trying to get, you know, communists who want us all killed in, you know, for, over the sake of a moral issue that I care about. What really you know bothers I mean. me about the abortion issue is that even though, and it's mostly Christians, even though they say they try to make secular arguments, well, it's human DNA and all this, I grant them all that. The real reason I think they say these things is because of Yahweh, because of Jesus, because of God. They, they don't want to make God frown and sad. And just be honest and say that. Say you think it's a sin and that's why you're against it. And if you do it, maybe God's going to judge the country and there are going to be more tornadoes. Like just the, And some Christians actually admit it, but um, very few. And I, I just think that the practical implications, like there's so many unwanted children in this country. And if you were to, like if I was Thanos, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I could just poof the unwanted babies out of existence at, let's say, the one day stage. Yeah, I I can almost guarantee you, crime and poverty would plummet fifty percent over like. Well, with, I mean, over look, I'm years. a little, I'm slightly unorthodox on this. I'm actually technically okay with the one day stage, but um, that is my line. I don't know. The way I view it is like I I think it becomes murder uh, when the third cell forms. The um, third? Yeah. Oh, you got the, you to... the Trinity. That's why, right? <laughs> that's a that's a good argument. I'll have to bring that up and annoy someone sometime. No, uh, but no, it's just like it. The sperm is the fa is a, a cell of the father. The egg is a cell of the mother. The third cell is the first uh, cell, which is a genetically distinct organism from either one. It's an individual life form. So that would be my ideal line. But again, I really do want to stress like this is not something I'm willing to you know sacrifice the republic over at the moment. I I want to get this done eventually. But I kind of see it as a, you know. But do you agree with me that the Republican Party, if they soften their stance, like let's say the Republican Party official stance or uh, Trump was to say, yes, abortion to 15 weeks is okay. And, and, and maybe it should be a right, not, not just a privilege, but a right. I, I, I guarantee think you, like the Republican Party, so many people would, would go over. Yeah, but you might get people falling off too. Like if you really like came out like strong and said every state. But the more people would off. shift for the Republicans and leave. And the reason why I say that is because sixty five percent of this nation yeah. takes the stance of abortion as I do. It's like fifteen to twenty five weeks is fine, and you know, and um, incest, rape, and the life of the mother. Like these are very well, I mean, reasonable. I'm, I'm I don't take issue with Trump saying that on the campaign trail, as far as like, you know, I'm for this or whatever. My issue is more just, um, I don't know. I, I, I think if you tried to, tried to start saying every state in the union no longer gets the, to decide its own abortion rights, like we just fought for for 60 years, I think you would have, you would have like a 20%, 30% of this country that votes Republican fall off. And even if it's just half of that, that could be 
an election in places like Ohio and PA and that sort of thing. Yeah, you could be right. But... I mean, look, man, I'm not, again, I'm not really, I, I am, trust me, when I have, you know, much more ardent uh, pro-life friends than me uh, who, you know, are like, hell yeah, we need to fucking, you know, try to get this through the Senate on a 51 vote. I'm like, that's bullshit. But I would like to see it one day. It's just that I'm willing to wait till people agree with us to do it. And I think they will. But Because I, I bet you there's a lot of Democratic women out there who are against the immigration that's been happening the last few years, who are against the um, the woke ideology, the whole gender yeah, ideology they don't want thing. To get, yeah, uh, and their daughters getting raped in the bathroom. They, they might hate Trump, but these are important issues for them. But it's that abortion thing. If 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 that was gone, I mean, they would sh switch over to the Republican side like almost immediately. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I get where you're coming from, and I, and I'm not totally unsympathetic to the idea of, hey, let's not, you know, go out there and be uh, George Bush about this, um, shall we say? But I'm a little, I, I, I also don't think we should go too far the other way. But again, this is, you know, just strategic. Well, well you know what I've learned in life, Jack, is that there's nothing I can say or do to change the minds of some people, um, like especially Catholics. <laughs> yeah. Like. Uh, there's a guy named Trent Horn, uh, yeah. who I've debated, and he, he might listen to this. And there's nothing I could say that could change his mind on abortion because it goes deeper than just pragmatics. It goes deeper than things like crime or unwanted pregnancies. It, it goes to the creation order and what God designed us to be and, and how things are supposed to work and, and sin and eternal life. Well, yeah, I mean, if you really if you really drill down into what I believe, man, I mean, I think abortion fundamentally fucks people up. Um, I think that at the end of the day, the you know, the rates of mental illness after having an abortion are much higher. And again, this is getting into the whole secular arguments or whatever for it. But it is genuinely part of how I view the world, which is that, you know, when you live in accordance with a certain lifestyle. But uh, my guess I is my guess is. Uh, I can't say the F word because I just wasn't raised to, but, um, <laughs> the, oh, it's only the Christians who go through this mentally or the, the religious that go through this mental depression after having abortion, especially if it's before 15 weeks. I think there's a lot of what Christians would say secularists out there who almost, well, I know there's some that take joy in having abortion. Like, there's no big deal. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I, all I can say is speak to the absolute numbers. I mean, I, I would I would think we would agree that, you know, um, and again, I'm not the best poster boy for this myself. Not that it's a huge thing, but just like, you know, as, at least in the case of women, I know that the amount of sexual partners they have before marriage greatly increases in aggregate their rates of, um, you know, mental illness. Would you agree with that? Or you think that's also only the case of the religious? I think the biggest... If we're talking environment, uh, nature, uh, sorry, nurture versus nature, the biggest thing that causes mental illness is the lack of a father in a home. Well, I think that's true, but I also think what I said is, you know, another factor. But yeah, you're right. Like if you I mean, had a if you had a good role model, a father in the home who cares about his kids, loves his kids, uh, you're less likely to have a daughter who's going to seek love from a stupid boy open her legs and get pregnant and then have an unwanted child. You're going to have, yeah. a, you're going to have a daughter who's more stable, who's going mm -hmm. to say, who, like I give my daughter hugs often. She gets this masculine, I'm cared for feeling. And yeah. so she's less likely to look, at, look for it in some goofball of a man. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I, I just, you know... I think all these things add up, you know, together. I mean, because, of course, I'm sure you and I both know uh, girls who had decent homes, at least, who still ended up screwed up. And Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think, uh, you know, like some of these They're things. They're called Catholics, kinda... Catholic girls. Oh, really? Really? They're the easy ones, are they? Well, that's Don't why they have a reputation of being a little promiscuous? Catholic girls? Well, you see, that it's funny. Everyone says that. Uh, I, I, the joke was always uh, in my uh, Catholic school growing up that it was the Protestants were easy, that you couldn't, that the uh, nuns would, um, you know, basically staple the, uh, well, anyway. Um, but yeah, yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying. How do these glasses uh, look on me? Not bad, man. Not bad. It's kind of got a Steve Jobs vibe to it. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's strange to see in something different, but yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, nice talking to you, Jack. Yeah, sorry. I hope I didn't overstay my welcome. Take care. No, 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 no. You, you didn't. I just want to keep things fresh for the audience. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> See ya. Uh, let's see here. Mel Bede, she's uh, saying exactly what I said. I'm a woman, and the overturning of Roe versus Wade was a huge f for me against the Republican Party. I refuse to vote for Trump, but may have come back if not for that issue. Yeah. I had to explain to a guy, well, I tried to explain to a guy yesterday that there's a difference between losing the right to abortion and abortion being illegal. Some people still don't understand that. It's a state-to-state -state issue now. But as a nation, as a whole, <coughs> as a whole, as a nation, it's not illegal to have an abortion. Now, a state can make it illegal. You just lose that right to a specific medical procedure. See, if you have it as a right, then it has to be legal. But if it's not a right, it can be either legal or not. So please... If you didn't know that before, I hope you understand what I just said. So Mel, if that helps you to come back to the Republican Party, you can still live in a blue state so you can have your abortions. Because I know you, what, you like to have three or four a, week, um, a year, right? <laughs> Oh, is she laughing? Um, and but you could still come to the Republican Party and say, "Yeah, it shouldn't be a right. Like, should it be a right for me to have my uh, knee surgery paid for by the federal government, or that it's legal to have my knee surgery? Is that a right? No, it's not. I mean, in my opinion, there should be fewer rights and more responsibilities. the The, the term rights is is distasteful to me. I understand why it exists. I, I get it. But anybody who starts demanding their rights typically is a um, whiner, complainer, slacker. People who espouse responsibilities tend to be the ones who pay the most taxes in this country and run the country. Oh, there's a good generalization for you, right? You shouldn't have travel days to have an abortion. Imagine having to cross. Time. Oh, boo-hoo. I flew to Canada for our first in vitro fertilization thing because it was cheaper. I mean, or drove to Canada, actually. Like, I'm sorry, Mel, but there are many ways to reach orgasm. Uh, intercourse is one of them. You can still have orgasms without intercourse. So if you don't want an abortion, don't let the thingy go into your thingy. Or at least not that thingy. It may be a have a, that thingy go into a different thingy. I mean, this whole idea of forced pregnancy on me, unless you're raped... And, uh, and unless you're totally ignorant of how where babies come from, there is no forced pregnancy. Even if you're using protection, you know the risks, whether it be 1%, 2%. You know there's a 1% chance you could become pregnant. You know that going in. It's like, it's like jumping out of an airplane with your parachute. And saying, and then the parachute doesn't open. Say, oh, this has been forced upon me, my death. Stop your whining, women. You knew what the risks were going in when you jumped out of that plane. Uh, no women, no women are ever going to listen to me again. Even Mel's going to leave now. Your mouth can't get pregnant. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> uh. 
Okay, we're going to do, I'll take another caller if there's someone who wants to call in. But in the meantime, I need suggestions for my outro music. It has to be classic 80s. Yeah, I understand there's problems with the pill. Uh, oh, yeah, the pill works well, but there's problems with it. But there's other forms of birth control. So I, I'm looking for a classic 80s song. Either pop or rock. Could even be blues, I don't care. Uh, no metal. Heavy metal. Some rock can be considered metal-ish. See? See, look at this. I'm not leaving. You can't hurt my feelings unless I let you. See? I wish I could take Mel here and mold her into some type of statue. And then every woman born on this planet, every human born on this planet, be born in her image. Mel gets it. You can't hurt my feelings unless I let you. See, this is how adults speak. Children say things like, don't say that, you hurt my feelings. That's how children speak. Adults sound like Mel. Children sound like progressive left. Oh, I like Rush. Tom Sawyer. Van Halen. I already played Jump the other day. Billy Jean. Michael Jackson. Yeah, that's a possibility. I'm going to set that one up until someone comes up with something better. So far, Billy Jean by Michael Jackson is winning. And uh, I'm willing to take one more call if somebody wants to come in. Yeah, since we were talking about abortion, Billy Jean's very apropos. Jesse's girl, not bad. My daughter has a beautiful playlist of classic 80s songs, but she won't send it to me unless I pay her. Too much Mennonite blood in my daughter. Ah, Chameleon, Boy George. Love the gays. Some of my best friends are gays and black. When are you going to review the pineapple debate, horn versus white, that Diego sent you? Oh, I think I looked at it and was a little bored. It didn't give me enough dopamine kick. But maybe I just didn't watch enough of it. Sasha with the little rainbow. Yeah, Sasha's one of my good gay friends. I think he's even from the same uh, province I'm from. Right, Sasha? Is that right? You're actually even from the, the town I went to high school in, right? If I'm thinking you are who you are. I didn't think that town produced gay people. Okay, here's our last call. Sterling, no pressure, but you better be good. Hey, Sterling. Hey, what's up, Pankey? Uh, not too much, just my cholesterol. I believe that. Um, so I heard you talking about, uh, I heard you talking about abortion, yeah? You, you, got, you got a problem with abortion? Uh, no, no, no. I'm pretty much down the middle. Okay. Yeah, how, I, heard how you about say, you? I heard you say something about, oh, you know, women, uh, you know, the risk that you were taking when you signed up for this or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if women think that uh, uh, unwanted pregnancies are forced upon them, then maybe they shouldn't have had uh, that type of sex, right? Okay. Oh, that's for, that's actually dumb, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, because, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do, I mean, you know the risk you're taking. You might get chlamydia, right? Yeah. So should you live with chlamydia forever? 
Oh no, I'm not talking about the after effects. I'm not talk I'm talking about the the right to abortion. Um, if whenever that right is removed, and let's say you live in a state where you can't have an abortion, um, like Mel was saying, some people hate that they have to drive to another state. I'm saying, well, you should have thought of that before you had that type of sex. Right. You you had unprotected sex, so you you deal yeah. with the pregnancy and the consequences. Yeah. 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 You're good with that. Yeah. 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 What's wrong yeah, with so that? There's no more like, I'm sorry. What's wrong with that? Well, like I said, like, well, what if that same person couldn't, uh, what if that same person contracted chlamydia? Should they, they should, should they live with chlamydia? Yeah, if, for... So if their health insurance doesn't cover chlamydia, they should, before they have sex, they should have like a little jar. And they should put like a few hundreds in there to cover the de deductible to solve the chlamydia problem. Well, well, I think that's a false comparison because, like, whose insurance covers abortion? Though? Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, you're saying now, well, oh, if you can't afford to be treated for chlamydia, then you should. Well, yeah, yeah. Insurance. Forget the insurance. Just let's say, let's say there's a five percent chance you get pregnant or a five percent chance you get a STD. Okay. Right. So then, what you should do is, I'm going to have sex. I realize with my brain that there's a five percent chance. I have a thousand dollars in my bank account in case that five percent happens that I can cover it. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so, and if the answer is yes, they do, then then yeah, carry on. then you're basically you're accepting the risk. It's the same as like I gave the jumping out of an airplane with a parachute example. Before people jump out of an airplane, they sign a document that they understand the risks that they might die. And so, what a woman should do before she has vaginal intercourse is say, "I understand, I could get pregnant, or I right. could get an STD. Men should sign that too, and I'm willing to have right. sexual intercourse anyhow." Uh -huh. And then when it, and if then it happens, then if it happens, don't blame society for it. Don't demand that they, you know, give you your services that you deserve or whatever. Accept the responsibility and move on. But you accept for the, their their right to go get treated for either either case if they can seek the means to do so. It's not a right to get specific medical procedures in the United States. What you so so it should be a right to be treated for chlamydia? Yes or no? No. It shouldn't be a right. See, this is the exact argument I had with someone yesterday. There's a difference between rights and uh, whether something's legal or not. Okay. So if you're asking me, is it should it be illegal to treat chlamydia? No, it should be legal. Yeah, fine. Should it be legal for to get an abortion? No, it should be legal to get an abortion. But it should not okay. be a right. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, see, what I said <laughs> is so powerful, it made your camera fl flip over. <laughs> Oh, okay, so so now now I understand. All right, thanks for clarifying that, Pankey. Cheers. Okay, see you, Sterling. Yeah, this is a, it's amazing how many people don't don't get that the first time. I think abortion, especially in the, the first fifteen weeks, should be legal, and at the same time, I can say it should not be a right. Can people get that through their thick skulls? how that's not a contradiction that i'm not even putting tension on that it should not be a right to get abortion but it should be legal to get an abortion in the first 15 weeks i actually think it should be illegal after yeah it certainly looked like he was in some type of cia inter interrogation room okay did anybody else come up with better songs uh, Rick roll something? No. Uh, yeah, you are from Steinbeck, Sasha. You, and you're the only gay there. See, I think you're only gay for the for the publicity. You want to be known as the only gay guy from Steinbeck. So you can get all the attention from women who are seeking um, advice on how to get a boyfriend. <laughs> 